Okay guys, let's take a look through this massive pile of sketchbooks. This is one of the first sketchbooks that I got that was purely just for watercolour. I was learning a lot about urban sketching at this time. I think I was still too scared to actually go and paint in real life, but I was painting a lot of these from photos that I'd taken out and about. And I think I discovered the Reddit thread called Reddit Gets Drawn at this stage, which is basically people submit their own selfies and then artists draw them and submit them to the reddit threads the baby looks like it has a beard so <laughs> went a little bit wrong but this one was one of the first that i was actually quite happy with i think i was trying to get a bit looser with my style and and, tr and trying not to be so tight with everything and then these were from when I moved house. So I didn't really have much to paint, but I was trying to do a bit more stuff from observation. So the boxes and my office. This was the very first drawing that I did on location. I was so scared as I was doing it for some reason. I don't really know why, but I just was quite scared to start doing urban sketching. I liked the idea of it, but I just never drawn in public before. And I think I painted this one when I got home because I was too scared to bring my actual paints with me. I'm trying to do a realistic sketchbook tour, so I want to include the bad drawings as well. Uh, this was, I don't know what the hell was going on here. I think it was the very first thing I drew outside. So yeah, it's a bit weird. I remember being really happy with these ones. The I was practicing negative painting and painting around the objects and I really like the ice cream that I did here so I like the way I've painted around it with the background almost creating the shape of the ice cream and it adds a really nice sense of light and this was the very first time that I had my Daniel Smith paints that I had just bought and I clearly didn't know how to control the saturation because I wasn't used to having paints that were so pigmented and yeah it's just very saturated some of these sketches coming up because I just didn't understand how to control it and I just wasn't used to having just such pigmented paints I mean they're, they're amazing but you do just have to learn to control them a little bit and I think here I was practicing a bit more painting from observation this one was one of the very first paintings that I did on location it was just a cafe near my house I think I was doing Liz Steele's one of Liz Steele's courses at this time so on to the next sketchbook this is the moleskin watercolour sketchbook and I've got it in A4 landscape size and the very first painting that I did on it was a panorama which is quite fun to do especially when you've got a landscape sketchbook so you can fit a lot of stuff in and then I think I went out on location for this one which is why the sketches aren't that great but as I said I wanted to do a bit of a realistic sketchbook tour so I'm not going to cut any of the things that I don't like out I see a lot of artists when they're doing sketchbook tours they don't seem to have a single bad page and I don't know if they are just genuinely that good or they just treat their sketchbook almost like a final like every page is a final piece but I try not to do that because you can just get so worked up and it can just become very stressful if you feel like you need to do a perfect painting on every single page. So I almost sometimes intentionally mess up a page or just do some scribbly drawings just to get myself out of that fear of ruining the sketchbook. And I think at this point I was getting quite frustrated because I felt like I wasn't progressing as fast as I hoped and I always expect myself to progress a lot faster than I actually do. And I think it's the same with any kind of new skill you, you see all these people online who are really good at something and you just get frustrated because you can't fully replicate what they're doing and I think at this point I was getting a bit to that stage but then when I did this painting I kind of fell back in love with it again I remember being really happy with the seagull and the looseness of it and yeah the colours I don't know I just really like this painting I still do actually and this one was done from a photo that my sister sent through on our family WhatsApp group chat. So that's something I do quite often. If I'm feeling a bit homesick, I'll just paint something that um, one of my family members or friends, a photo that they send through. 
and it's just quite a nice way to feel a bit more connected to people I think especially during these crazy times so I got this easel for my birthday at Windsor and Newton when I was very excited about it I'd also figured out how I could sketch outside standing up I don't actually use this setup too much just because I prefer to just paint sitting down when I'm out and about but it was definitely fun to experiment with some new setups and then I think I got to the point of my sketchbook where I was just getting a bit sick of it and I always do this, I never really fully finish a sketchbook, I don't know why. So yeah, these are uh, slightly more recent paintings, I think, some of these. So this next sketchbook is by Etcher Lab. It was my very first 100% cotton watercolour sketchbook, so I was very excited, as you can see. I started it off with a painting of all of the paints I had at this point, so you can probably tell that I bought quite a few more since the last time I painted my palette. And because this was a smaller sketchbook, it was easier to go out on location. So I did this painting on location at just a little place down the road from my house. And then I took it when I went on holiday to Byron Bay. So a lot of the sketches in here are from Byron Bay. So this is the famous lighthouse. If you've been to Byron Bay, you definitely would have been to this lighthouse. So I just sort of stood by the rail and painted. And yeah, all of these are from Byron Bay, including at the airport when we were waiting a long time because our flight, flight was delayed. And then I did Inktober last year, so I decided to do a theme of hands. So for every prompt that there was, I related it to hands in some way. I'm not really sure why, I think I just wanted to practice hands. Um, this was painted from a photo in Byron Bay and this is, I think this was the very first TikTok video I ever made, so I painted it while filming. And also that painting on the right as well is one of my early TikTok videos. <laughs> to do this one, I wanted to get a really random effect on the crowd, so I just flicked my paintbrush and then drew people from all the dots that appeared, so that was quite fun. And then I had another art blocky type thing where I just really wasn't enjoying all the things that I was painting at this point and I don't know I always go through these phases and yeah I just didn't really feel that inspired at this point so I actually ended up stopping painting for quite a few months at this point I think and yeah I just I'm not really sure why it just seems to happen every once in a while but it's happened to me so many times now that I've just realized that it will eventually pass and if I just try to stop thinking too hard about it and just remember that painting should be fun I can kind of get through it eventually. And I like that painting of bin chickens. If you are from Australia, then you'll probably know about bin chickens. And I actually have a few of these sketchbooks because they come in a set of three. So I have this one and then I have one more, which I haven't even opened yet. So I walked from Bondi to Coogee with my friend and yeah, I was just getting back into it after my art block spell. Um, so I wasn't really that happy with the paintings that I did. I quite like this one though, this was a painting from a photo that I took at a festival that we went to at the beginning of the year. It's just quite funny to think now that I was really excited for 2020 um, and now I'm not so excited about 2020. And then something that really helped me get out of my art block was Struthless's isolated art challenge which he did, I think it was in March and he just had prompts for every day of the month. So that was definitely a good chance for me to stop being so precious about my art and just have a bit of a laugh. So that definitely helps me get out of my art block. Some of them are quite weird. And then these are a few paintings I did in my house. This is actually from a Google Earth scene that I found. So this is kind of when I started to get the idea for doing my Earth Sketch Challenge. Yeah, I kind of hate the one on the right, but as I said, I'm trying to do a realistic sketchbook tour, including the things I don't like quite so much. 
Then I went sketching around the beaches here in Sydney. I made a YouTube video of that, so if you wanna see that video, then you can just click up above. So that is pretty much it for my sketchbook flip through. As you can see, I've definitely had a few ups and downs when it comes to getting art block and feeling frustrated with my work, but I think that's quite a common thing for most people to go through. And the main thing I've realized over time and over this past year is to just try not to get too caught up in the frustrations and comparing your work to others because it's just one of the worst things that you can do for your own creativity. Thank you for watching and flipping through all these sketchbooks with me. I post new videos every Sunday, but for now, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>